This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. This video is spoiler-free. Dune Part 2 is finally here, and that's crazy. I'm a sentence in, and I'm already pretty happy. See, the first Dune was a personal favorite of mine from 2021. I really enjoyed it, and with time, have only grown to love it more. The more I learn about Dune, the more I love it, which is to say I've been Dune-pilled, ladies and gents, long before I saw Part 2. And after seeing this new one... I don't even know what to call what I am now. I'm, I'm downright addicted. Dune Part 2 follows Paul, who, with the help of the Fremen, seeks revenge for what happened to his family. That's a pretty stripped-down version of what we have here. The premise of this film makes the first film feel really tiny. I wanted to say that this makes the first Dune look like one long setup, but I don't see the first Dune as that, and I know a lot of people are going to start calling the first Dune that. People only call that movie half a movie, and I don't think it is. It's not unfinished, and I think that it functions really well as a standalone film which says a lot about this new one. Let's cut to the chase. Dune 2 is a step up in virtually every single way. What Dune Part 2 feels like is a series of things working at the top of their game. And let's start with Denis Villeneuve. Fine, I'll say it. I love Denis. And I've come to the realization that he's reached a level of auteur status akin to Wes Anderson and Christopher Nolan. Which is extremely exciting. To have a director this artistically realized at a time like this for the industry, where he's potentially at his peak, it's insanely rare. Yeah, you have your Robert Eggers and your Jordan Peels, but even they aren't working with the size that Denis has access to here. And the problem with Denis' rising success, especially with something like Dune, is it's easy to become predictable or obvious, and those less curious about what he has to offer will just write him off and grow bored of what he's doing eventually. And that may happen someday, but it sure as shit's not gonna happen with Dune Part 2. This film is Denis working at the top of his game. I mean, he has the benefit of directing the first film and knowing what worked and what didn't so that he could go even harder for this second one. But what I'm saying is, Part 2 is a miracle of a film in many ways, and one of them is that Denis was given a green light to indulge and go full weirdo mode, to really lean into his ethereal and futuristic style with a massive budget. Yeah, Dune Messiah would be great to have, we'll probably get it, but it's not like we're banking on getting another film greenlit like we were with the first film. You could argue part one was safe in some ways, but this film is anything but that. It's all about leaving nothing on the cutting room floor. And to see a filmmaker recognize that, and to see that creative liberty in the filmmaking is rare. He doesn't take the opportunity for granted. Every single scene in this expands on the world building in a surprising and expertly crafted way. The attention to detail in every piece of production design, every costume, every voice, it's so thoughtful. And when you have that level of care, that mind you, is only allowed and properly executed every so often, the world of the film becomes so believable and easy to live in, easy to feel invested in. And guys, to feel surprised by and in awe of what's on screen, for a major student blockbuster, what a feeling, what a feeling. And what's so funny about Denis is it feels like he's done this with several films now. I remember seeing Blade Runner 2049 and being like, wow, to see someone clearly in full control of his vision at this scale, also telling an emotionally compelling story, how special. It's why I compare him to someone like Wes Anderson. You keep thinking he's reached the peak of what he's capable of, and then he shows you something entirely new that you didn't even know was possible. I'm starting to think he's one of our finest directors working today. Another aspect at the top of its game is the cast. Singling out specifically Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya, both of whom deliver their best work. I've always wanted to see Zendaya sink her teeth into a complex role like this. She's amazing in Euphoria, but I always thought she had the screen presence to dominate a thicker role, something with more grit to it, and she sure as hell does it here. And Timothy Chalamet delivers, in my opinion, his most complex and ambitious role to date. I knew before going into this that Paul went down a certain path, and I was doubtful, even as a fan of Timothy Chalamet, that he would be able to nail a character as dark as this. But he really does, and a lot of the credit goes to how Denis directs him. He's portrayed as a sort of unreachable figure in the back half of this film. You can believe his power just through the composition of the frame, which is a feat in itself. And while we're talking performances, I thought Austin Butler was incredible. God damn it, I gotta give the man credit. He knows how to use his voice. He's one of the few rising stars who really recognizes his voice as a tool and can bend it in, in really unique ways, and this is a really great example of that. Having just seen Madam Web, hearing the villain's voice in that movie, you realize how difficult it is to sell a menacing voice and not come off goofy, but Butler pulls it off seamlessly. It never feels like he's overacting, but he does jump off the screen. He's buzzing with energy in this film. 
Really, there are no weak performances here. There's a clear understanding of the material from everyone on screen, whether it be Dave Bautista, Florence Pugh, Rebecca Ferguson, Christopher Walken, Stellan Skarsgård, Josh Brolin, you get the idea. A critique I saw for the first film, which I somewhat agree with, is that Paul as a character felt a little bland, intentionally unfinished, but lacking the depth to work as the protagonist for that film on its own, which for many reasons is <laughs> not the case here. If Doom Part 1 in general felt empty to you, I have some good news about this one. Part 2 teeters on being almost too dense with material, whether it be world building, character development, callbacks, pol political stuff, there's a massive amount of material here, but it never feels overwhelming. This is going to sound like I've only ever seen one other piece of media ever, but it's dense in the way Succession is dense bear with me. Where it's not like you're trying to juggle all the different dynamics in your head as you're watching, it goes down easy, but there is a richness to the characters here, unique to how they explore them in the film, where you could watch it over and over again and dissect new details each time. That's the kind of work that not only I get excited about, but that has a lasting impact that resonates with audiences for years. And to see something that well executed at this scale, rare as hell. Hans Zimmer's score, which I'm listening to as I write this review, is another step up from the first. This film feels a lot more spiritual than the first, understandably, and the score fits that. There are a lot more wind instruments, I, I think that's what they are, which adds an airy and grounded feel to the film, as opposed to something more distant. Not only do the characters feel more human, but the music does too, and I think that's beautiful. And the third thing that's working at the top of its game is Dune itself. Listen, while I may be Dune-pilled, I can't sit here acting like I'm the biggest Dune fan in the world. I, I know there are loads of other people that are going to be geeking out about this way more than I am. But I still want to say that it made me really happy and weirdly emotional to see this properly adapted on the big screen. Not that it wasn't with the first film, I think that first film does do that part of the story justice, but Dune is big and dark and strange. And part two is all of that. Really, when you leave the theater, that's kind of the first reaction you have, is that that was a big and strange event that I just went to. I mentioned in my Dune review from a few years ago that it's always seemed like the kind of story that people have struggled to adapt. It's impossible to put on the screen, yet it's so visually rich that it's always deserved that treatment. And thanks to a series of miracles, a proper adaptation finally happened. An adaptation comparable to that of Lord of the Rings. And why does this make me weirdly emotional? For someone who wasn't even that attached to the book? Well see, I never grew up on Lord of the Rings, or Star Wars, or even Harry Potter if you want to throw that in there. Any major fantasy or sci-fi epic truly trilogy, franchise, whatever you want to call it, I never really understood what it meant to live through something as special as that, as rare as that. I've since, you know, revisited them and I've experienced them myself, but I didn't get to live through them as they were happening. And I was kind of feeling like that was, I was never going to get to live through something like that, just given what the film industry looks like. Studios chase this high every year and nothing aside from maybe Endgame has felt like it brought that sense of scale to the theater, a sort of storytelling that felt like an event, a moment, and brought a level of seriousness to the craft that made you believe what was happening on screen. To me, that's what's so special about these large, epic tales, especially when they're done right. And Dune Part 2, as someone who never got to experience that, captured that feeling. I finally got to live through something like this. As cliche and as corny as this sounds, it's the kind of thing I'm going to tell my grandchildren about. How special is that, right? If you can't tell, I'm riding a high from this film, and damn is that a good feeling. So I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Go watch Dune Part 2 on the biggest screen imaginable and form your own opinion. And before you head out, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace, the best place to go to build a website and make that idea of yours come to life. They have an amazing feature called Fluida Engine, which is a next generation website design system that allows you to customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology. Squarespace is a great place to showcase your work in a beautiful way. For me, that's videos, which is why I love their video collection feature, which allows you to host video content, organize your video library, and showcase your content on beautiful video pages for desktop or mobile. And to make the act of putting together that that website. Just that much easier, they have an asset library, which allows you to upload, organize, and access all your content from one central hub and use it across the Squarespace platform. The best part, though, is that you can go to squarespace.com to start your free trial, and when you're ready to launch that beautiful website of yours, go to squarespace.com slash karsten to get 10% off of your first purchase. Thanks for watching.